What's up, interloper? This is Frank, and this is No Man's Sky. So you'll start your adventure here, on a planet with no memory or knowledge of what's going on. At first, playing in VR is awesome since the worlds are massive and immersive, the aiming is easy, accessing systems and inventory from the back of your wrist and multi-tool is neat, and being able to look around your cockpit is a huge benefit. But room scale VR was frustrating since the HUD doesn't follow your gaze, and I kept turning around while exploring only to lose track of critical information like how much oxygen I had left, what my environmental protection was at, what my shields and health level were, and especially what the heck I was even collecting. But whatever, before long I found my very own ship. Finally, I still have no clue what the heck is going on, and the three alien races on this planet only speak in riddles. Time for me to find some answers among the stars. Planets have procedurally generated flora and fauna, and you'll spend a lot of time scanning them with your visor, which gives you information and reveals extra resources you can collect. Alright, let's see. My ship can fly on planets and boost, but this costs fuel which I need to replenish. Okay, no problem. Wait, there's also pulse engines for rapid interplanetary travel? Okay, it uses a different fuel, but that's cool, I think I can manage this. Oh, hold up. There's also a warp drive, which uses another type of fuel, and all these things take up inventory space? Okay, that's a lot of inventory to manage, No Man's Sky, but I'm sure you know what you're doing. I better clear up my inventory since things are getting a little tight. Damn, why can't I split stacks of items in my inventory? Isn't there a faster way to set the amount I want to sell? And how come items move around and do backflips whenever I try to sell them? This is taking way longer than it should. Are all these NPCs doing the same thing that I am? Are they stuck in menus like me? Damn. Has this game turned me into a mindless NPC as well? No, forget that. Inventory looks fine, time to explore and collect. Hmm, might as well loot all these treasures literally littered everywhere. Should I hold on to all this rusted metal, residual goop, viscous fluid, living slime, and facium that's gumming up all these treasures? Do I need this stuff? Can't hurt to hold on to it, right? Oh wait, the local animals are aggressive here. Oh, that's cute. Look at him try to hurt me. Hmm, what's this? Mordite and meat. Okay, I'll hold on to it, I guess. Might come in handy. Oh, cool, a structure in the middle of nowhere. This must be rare. I bet there's good treasure inside. Hmm, this alien is trying to say something. He gestures that my multi-tool is a piece of trash and wants me to pass it over, but I still don't understand a word he's saying. Oh, cool, he's offering me another multi-tool. Is it free? Seems to be free. I don't mind a free gun. Maybe I can have it as a secondary weapon. What? What? He threw my gun away? What do you mean? Where is it? I want it back! I installed so many mods on that gun! I don't want to recollect all the items I need to mod this new multi-tool! Do you know how tight my inventory is? Oh my gosh, this gun is damaged and needs to be repaired before I can even use those slots? Fine, you won't give me back my gun, then I'll just spend hours grinding back to where I was. <sighs> Oh, thank goodness, another building. Maybe they can give me some answers. Hmm, more alien riddles. Seems like I need to pick an option here, but I don't understand what he told me. Guess I'll pick this option? Ugh, how am I supposed to do anything in this game if I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing and my inventory is about the size of a grade school backpack? Perhaps I'm being too hasty. This game is supposed to be massive. I've only played for like 11 hours. Maybe things get better. Let's do some research. It seems I can increase my inventory by visiting space stations. Each one will have a kiosk which can increase my main technology and cargo inventory by one slot for an ever increasing price. Okay, okay, I can do this. I'll just jump to 60 plus different systems and scan, collect, and grind resources as I go. Let me just pop my route to the next system. Wait, I can't access my galaxy map from the space station? I have to launch into space first? Isn't that like not allowing me to use my GPS until after I've merged onto the highway? That's a little unintuitive, No Man's Sky, but I'm sure you know what you're doing. Okay, jump to a new system. Wait, there's some sort of space battle here. Forget that, I'm having enough trouble keeping afloat as it is. I don't need some heavily upgraded Bozo shooting me down now with all this inventory I'm trying to manage. Hmm, other than the fact that there's no HOTAS support and flight is mainly controlled by the mouse, which is bizarre, the flying is pretty convenient. Like, pulse engines fly right through asteroids and let me quickly zoom to and from a planet's surface with ease, and my ship has little trouble landing on even the most precarious of places. Not bad. Besides, I've learned how to use landing pads to prevent my fuel from being used up, and I found this sweet tech which regenerates landing fuel while idle. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Oh, is that a storm approaching? Damn. Damn, it's eating through my secondary environmental shields. Damn, it's really doing a number on my primary environmental shields. Damn, it's screwing up my main shields. Damn, it's really busting up my health. Well, I guess I better find refuge. I know that shelters and my ship protect me from the weather, but I wonder if diving underwater helps. Oh, that's cool, it worked. You know, this game isn't so bad. Whoa, there's an entire world down here to scan and farm. I'll need to come back later when I have my underwater tech all researched. Besides, I still need to grind all these rewards and reputation from these guilds. This space station kiosk gives me missions and conveniently I can complete them in any system and hand them into any mission agent so that I'm not stuck in any one place. Maybe I'll visit a planet with ancient bones and monoliths while I'm 
at it so that I can sell the bones for credits and learn the alien languages one word at a time. Okay, done here, off to the next system. Man, another space fight. Maybe I'll check this one out. Beep pew, beep pew, pew. Wait, that's it? But that was so easy. Oh, this guy is hailing me. Damn right you're thanking me. I obliterated those guys. What? You want me to come on board your freighter? Well, okay, I'm sure he just wants to shake my hand and thank me in person. Sup, brother? Some fight out there, huh? Did you see how I pew pewed those guys? What? You want to give me your entire freighter? For free? Are you kidding? What's the catch? No catch. Just a free freighter that can travel along me as a huge mobile storage container and can even be upgraded to allow me to spawn any exocraft on a planet when my freighter is in that system? Damn. I can't believe I put off dogfighting for so long. How was I supposed to know that this ship I found broken and abandoned could rip through any pirate in the galaxy? Maybe I'm finally understanding this game. I've built all my exocrafts and I have all these NPCs tending to my base. I think I'm getting close to completing some of these quests and I'm starting to understand the alien language, which is really helpful. I also got this scanner for my Nautilon, which finds things like ruins and crashed ships. That's really cool. I can find a new ship, fix it up, and have a fleet of them. I can even sell the crappy ships to space stations for some extra cash. Hey, haven't I seen this Gek before? How long have I been at the space station selling ships and items? Do I appear as visited to him? Am I just like an NPC? No, I'm better than that. I've won all these upgrades from my multi-tool, and I have no less than five different firing modes, which are all specialized for different tasks. Sure, it sucks that I can't hotkey the weapon weapon modes and I need to cycle through them one at a time. And yeah, weapon settings reset when I switch between firing modes, forcing me to press way too many different keys to reload or switch back to my preferred settings. But no big deal, No Man's Sky, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Besides, I found the Space Anomaly, which I can summon at my whim. It acts like a multiplayer hub and gives me access to so many new upgrades and missions. I'll try a few of these community missions solo, since I've only been playing for about 50 hours and still have no idea what I'm doing. I don't want to burden any of these other people with my inept inventory and abilities. Hmm, okay, this mission rewards me with Quicksilver, which I need for cosmetics, and all I need to do is feed animals? Pfft, easy, sign me up. Alright, seems I need a nutrient processor to convert some local plants and facium into- Wait, I've been throwing away facium to save inventory space. Damn, hold up, seems I can craft some food pellets and feed them to the creatures first. Then I can collect their poop and scrape facium out of their feces. Alright, then I mix it in with some fruit and vegetables in a processor, which gives me some paste? Uh, that I feed back to them? And they love it? Amazing. Crisis averted. Oh, and check it out. There's rare materials nearby. I need this stuff so bad. Let me just mine this up real quick before I head back to... What? I didn't know my inventory was full. Are you serious right now? What's the problem, No Man's Sky? I just want to collect infinite amounts of resources like you want me to. Why are you doing this to me? Uh... Maybe I'm overreacting. I'm only about 80 hours into this game. Maybe it gets better. I know. I'll update my base now that I've upgraded all my research trees. Nice. Now I have a working shop to sell goods and a ton of storage units. This should prevent me from ever having to worry about inventory management again. Also, I found out that data pods increase my inventory if I repair them. And between these and the space stations I visited, I finally maxed out my exosuit inventory. And this new ship I found is pretty sweet. Maybe I'll just keep looking for ships to add to my armada. Let's see. Hmm. This ship is kind of trash, but whatever, I'll just repair the engines and fly it back for some extra cash. Let me just press the swap button here and... Wait, did I just get rid of my old ship? No, no, that's not possible. There's at least nine landing pads on my freighter and this is only like my seventh ship. But I can't find my old ship anymore. Hold up, hold up, hold up. No, no man, Sky, don't do this to me. Let me look this up online. I'm sure the game knows what it's doing. What? I can only have six ships and I irreversibly threw away my best ship for this trash bucket? This can't be happening. Now I either have to wait around a space station for an NPC to randomly fly in with their procedurally generated ship so that I can offer to buy it off of them. Or I can go back to searching the ocean floor for a crashed ship, but this thing has no boost and progresses with the same speed and grace as the story in this game. No, 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 just relax. I need to go back to my starter ship and try something else before I lose it. Maybe there's a quest line I can work on. I still can't figure out why I can only select one quest at a time. Even if I'm right beside a quest objective, the game won't alert me unless I manually select the right quest in my menu. But whatever, I'm making progress and getting rewards. Like, check out these sweet Cyclotron upgrades. I own a Cyclotron, right? Let me just check. No, wait, I own an infrared knife accelerator? Oh, can I make a Cyclotron? 
Hmm, is that the same Gek from before? Is he trying to figure out how to manage his inventory and items as well? No, no, don't think about it. I've got all these mods, and I even learned how to combine them to maximize benefits. No NPC can do that, right? And I even found out how to upgrade my Exocraft so that motoring around a planet is a lot easier. Sure, some of these things have an inventory the size of a postage stamp, and upgrading them makes for some ridiculous inventory limitations, but whatever. They can literally cut a path through anything. And sure, I accidentally ran over a rare crystal and demolished it once, but whatever. I don't really need those resources anymore. The universe has opened up to me. I'm finally understanding the game. I'm scanning, collecting, questing, and discovering, and it's all so fluid now. The game finally makes sense, and it only took me about 130 hours to figure it out. Now upgrades and modifications are coming fast and furious. Most of my stuff is S-ranked. Maybe now I can join a group and do some community missions. Damn, this is all way easier than I thought. I could have been doing this ages ago. I should look up how to start the living ship questline. Oh, now you're really trying to hurt me, No Man's Sky. You mean all that time I spent grinding Quicksilver to buy a new look for my avatar, I should have been saving up 3,200 Quicksilver to buy a Void Egg to get a living ship? And Quicksilver missions only appear once a day with one weekly bonus mission as well? Thank God they stack in case I miss a day or two, but this will take me over a week to grind up enough Quicksilver. Silver. Whatever, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. In between these daily quests, I'll just search freighter crash sites since they apparently have a chance to hold freighter upgrade modules. And I can send some of my fleet to do some autonomous missions while I'm at it. Finally saved up enough for this void egg. Hmm, apparently I need to first find a suitable planet. Okay, done. Next find these coordinates? Okay, that's a bit tedious, but I can manage. Now find these rare items? That took a while, but I got it. Now, wait 24 hours, really? Sweet, this thing changed. Am I done? No, I need to find a new suitable planet. Ugh, I got coordinates again. Fine, let me pay attention to these tiny numbers while I fly around. Alright, that gave me a new multi-tool upgrade. I just need to install it. Okay, it transforms deposits into liquid sun. Ugh, finally got enough. Now to build this new blueprint, and... Wait for 24 hours again?! Oh man, is it done? Now what? Waiting for transmission. Finding suitable planet. Locating coordinates. Listening to alien ruin. Now I need a hypnotic eye, which I know I can get from these abyssal horrors, but where do I get the living water I need? It's not even in my catalog. Oh, seems living water is found in space. That makes sense. This giant jellyfish gives me free living water. Now I need to craft this piece of the living ship. Surely this is the end, right? Wait, 20 hours? Oh, for the love of... All right, another day, another suitable planet to find. Another set of coordinates to search for. Another multi-tool upgrade to install. Are you serious? Do I need to keep these installed or are they literally only used for these quests? Another rare material to collect. Another alien ruin to insert something into. And another day to wait. Boy, I hope this is the end. Let's see, this space encounter gave me a strange message. Unconventional travel may be required. What does that even mean? Looks like I need to find an alien portal, of which each planet only has one. And after driving around for an hour scanning for alien ruins without any luck, I found out that I can simply feed a Corvax casing into this ruin, and it gives me the portal's exact location. And now that I'm here, at the precipice of giving me a living ship, I need to input this riddle by way of glyphs, but none of these look like ascended orbs or hunters to me. There, thank God for the internet. Finally, time to claim my ship. What? Now I need to charge this arc item by flying to three different locations marked by coordinates? <laughs> and that's it. That's all I can currently tell you about No Man's Sky. In the end, there's a lot to this game that comes across as arbitrary and only useful to prolong the length of the game. And each edition feels like patchwork in a smorgasbord of semi-autonomous gameplay elements, of which there are many. An important saving grace is that the longer you play the game, the more conveniences and improvements you'll unlock, which alleviates the early, slow, and clumsy progression. And the game takes some scientific liberties to help with the repetitive gameplay, like how Black Hole's teleport you to remote areas. You can easily call your ship by your side if you need a ride or shelter. There is no need to slow down when approaching planets, and your starter ship and multi-tool will continue to be serviceable for a very long time, preventing you from needing to upgrade to new ones. In order to play this game effectively, you'll need to scour the internet for answers to ill-defined quest objectives and game events. Even something as trivial as saving my game or leaving a party was confusing at first, forcing me to alt-tab and figure it out online. The first few planets you see are amazing and awe-inspiring, but they tend to look pretty similar after a while. The unique ships will get you excited, but some of them are very bizarre, and finding an S-ranked ship that looks cool and has decent inventory is so bloody rare. And the first atlas or space station you visit will look cool, but then you realize that they're all virtually identical. It all makes the game feel light on substance, even though it tries to have so much content. If you're looking for a game with building, upgrading, exploring, and collecting elements, all set in an expansive sci-fi universe which slowly reveals itself to you over literally hundreds of hours, then 
No Man's Sky will be great for you, and the experience is always better with a friend. If you hate time sinks, grinding for materials and money, managing mods and inventory, or don't care for long quest lines which sometimes take internet searches and many hours to complete, then you'll probably hate this game. For my part, I'm glad I got to try it in VR. It was very cool to explore and see all the new gear from the first person perspective, but in the end, the gameplay made it difficult for me to play like this. For example, using the scanner in VR is very cool and intuitive. You simply click beside your HMD to turn it on and off, and this further increases an already immersive experience. But it's also needlessly hard to select destinations with your visor in VR, and you also need to collect crazy amounts of materials, so standing around trying to select a waypoint or appreciating the scenery is only going to slow you down. Personally, I prefer to play this game on the monitor because of all the time-saving mechanics which are inconspicuously absent in VR. Like on the monitor, you can combo your melee attack with your jump booster to fly forward at crazy speeds. You can't do this in VR, forcing you to sprint, which isn't very fast and has a cooldown. Also, sprinting holsters your weapon, meaning that you'll have to reach behind your back to grab the multi-tool again after every dash in VR. And you can't even change the terrain manipulator size to speed up your collection rate in VR. On the monitor, you can swap between three different sizes, but in VR, you're stuck with the middle set. Lastly, the story is a completely confused mess in my opinion. Forcing you to learn a few alien languages at a snail's pace just to get glimpses into what is happening around you wasn't so bad as a plot device, but once I started uncovering some of the story, I was left with more questions than answers. What's more is that sometimes the game offers you a choice of dialogue or actions, but this is often an illusion. Like, selecting to embrace or leave this conversation might make you think you have control over the situation, but by leaving you simply defer this quest or event. It simply sits and wait until you return and select the affirmative to progress the story or quest. The game left me with a feeling that the devs really didn't have a direction for the story, and after creating a procedurally generated universe with no rhyme or reason for any of it, they decided to double down and say that none of these travelers know what's going on either, so just go out and explore and stop asking questions. So in the end, there's really no need to rush. Take things slow and you'll love it. Try to hurry and you'll probably hate it. It's not hard, it's just time consuming. And you'll contemplate all this as you fly down to the surface of a new planet in your living ship, summon your freighter into orbit so that you can call down an exocraft and head head out to scan and explore the local flora and fauna, as well as collect some rare materials that you need for that next upgrade. And remember, this was a quick and dirty review of No Man's Sky. Wow, you're a true hero, you made it all the way to the end. Hey, can you do me a favor? Subscribe, like, comment, and share my video. It helps my channel grow. You can also check out my Patreon, Facebook, and Twitter if you're looking for other ways to support me.